Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to Liga Unlocked. Eric Mark here with you for the day one action from the quarter finals of the World Championship. The only civil war on the table. And when two LPL teams are on the rift, you know it's going to be, I'll call it scrappy. And that is, that's one word I would use to describe this series. To call it a uh, freestyle finger painting is usually the, the result of the art that we get from a couple of these LPL L versus LPL matches, the Civil War, especially when they're, you know, not necessarily at the tip at the top of the LPL mountain like LNG and Weibo find themselves as where they are as the respective seeds. But let's get into it because game one, it was all attention into the top side, all attention onto what I just said yesterday about Zika. Well, uh, they certainly heard it from Weibo and wanted to make sure that they jumped in on, on the top lane part. Yeah, he had a horrible start in the lane swap. And listen, in this meta where we're seeing lane swaps more often than not, it's not just a top laner's fault when they have a bad start because their team has to be playing around them or including them in that early game plan. Zika falls way behind. And, you know, to his credit, he does get back into this game and has a pretty sizable impact. But the game-changing moment in this one is absolutely where Weibo kind of bluffs. They've got the soul point and they just kind of ignore that fourth dragon and go right to Baron and LNG is left in no man's land. They don't pick up the dragon right away but they're not ready to contest Baron. They end up giving it for free and with the engage. It's a complete situation of being caught flat-footed right knowing that they thought okay well yeah you have to be here to fight for this and then you're not here you're over here. Okay we got to send guys over there but then you don't worry about securing this and you end up with nothing at the end of the day is how that played out Weibo in uh, interesting I feel like that's calling a team's bluff in that type of situation of saying yep okay we know that you're gonna want this type of thing or you're expecting this let's just full send here because you're not gonna be prepared you're not gonna be able to send both type of ways that's how it plays out and it is Weibo crushing through for the game one victory yeah I mean surprisingly from that they close it out I think it was three minutes basically ever since they quote unquote sneak that Baron right under LNG's nose, which is maybe one of the more surprising parts of this series is that they did close it out cleanly from there. And the Nocturne engages were never there for LNG in this game. No, and I think that's something that it's a little bit of that, you know, monkey's paw that we're seeing from a couple of these teams wanting to run that combo, wanting to run Nocturne just even on his own and what he can provide, what he can do when you again, you shut off the lights and everything else. But being completely unprepared is the way that I think a lot of these ones look, the way that it was layered in, the way that it was comboed in, any of these type of ones. It never had that wombo combo effect that we've been looking for pretty much since the play-in stage when we first got to see that nocturne Oriana combo really start to take off. And, you know, this this series as a whole was uh, quite a journey, quite a roller coaster, but none more back and forth than the second game in this set because absolute disaster class start out of Tarzan on the Amumu. Uh, you know, we got a fun little pick in there, but he looked out of sorts. He's flashing to get bandage tosses and whipping completely getting caught out where he doesn't mean to be. This looked like it was going to be a stomp and it ends up getting dragged to 40 minutes. <laughs> Which was unbelievable that it took this long. And I think this is kind of, this should have been the real alarm going on in your head for the series when LNG did take this long and was able to be stalled out, able to be pressured this type of way when they had the advantages that they did early on in this game too. I'm talking about your boy Zika in the top lane and what type of advantage to bounce back from game one for him was huge. Getting the Jax pick and making it be a menace out there on the rip. And I mean, let's be honest, the only reason LNG even wins this game is from an over push and heroic base defense. You've got a Sejuani that ends up getting a triple oh. kill here, but uh, yeah, it is sick as Jax that is absolutely terrifying. And the latter half of this game, time and time again, it was Tarzan getting one man alties on this Jax to just try and keep him away from his team. Everybody's been there. Everybody has been there. I don't care, you know, Summoner's Rift, if we're talking uh, Abyssal, you know, uh, Howling Abyss or whatever for ARAM. I don't care where it is. Twisted Tree Line. I don't care where you've been. 
you've been in one of those situations where someone is so giga fed and your only job is, well, I've got one or two peel abilities, jump onto them, pop them, and hope for the very best at that point. Uh, feels bad for Tarzan in this situation, but it is LNG evening things up and getting us into game three. Yeah, and then we're down to just a best of three, tied at ones, and level ones is where <laughs> things really got going in this one. You had the first <laughs> blood happening, but Weibo's not satisfied with just that. They want to push deeper. They end up overextending, giving a couple kills over to the Jax, uh, but... Er, Again, you're getting this Jax rolling, and it pushes too far for Weibo. They fall behind. But luckily throughout this game, not once, but two, three, probably four times, they get saved by Xiaohu's Oriana and his shockwaves. Oh, my God. Could they be more perfectly timed? I don't think so. The way that they were coming through, just at that moment of not only providing the use for your team and the damage that comes through, but it was also just almost a troll factor coming through with some of these ones just at the moments that they did to deny anything on the side of LNG. I'm also watching this one and I'm watching that early game and I'm kind of screaming at the computer screen going, why can't why can't these Eastern teams do this when it's Team Liquid or FlyQuest or one of these LCS teams or LEC even with G2 on the other side of the rift? We don't get these type of overextension, greedy type of plays against us. What's going on? Yeah, and I mean, that's just when you're in the chaos that is the LPL. You, you don't even know what's going on yourselves. But uh, the key play here, there's a moment where Scout is flashing forward after LNG's kind of won a fight to try and kill Xiaohu and he pops his Zanyas. That's a make or break moment because at that point, I forget the number, but Xiaohu has at least like a four or 500 gold bounty on his head. And I feel like if they get that kill there, that alone might be enough to swing the gold into LNG's favor. Oh, that would have been a big one. That would have been a big boost up of the golden, especially because again, you're looking at who on LNG is popping that, right? Who's getting that gold? Who's getting that power up? Would have been a carry, would have been a big time player for the team and of course, and come through Weibo find their strength regather themselves and get away with this game three taking us to game four with Weibo in the driver's seat yeah and listen this game the heroics you see light launch this arrow as they're fighting oh. around Baron and you're going man he whiffed right in between them but no he's an absolute genius and hits Zika right as he lands the TP how many times have we seen someone with that, I think it was Masu earlier in the tournament that was off by a pixel. Light is right on, and that final team fight that somehow ends up being 5 0 for Weibo, Zik is too late. He doesn't even get to participate all because of that error. Oh, it is so good. You love to see utilization of an ultimate in that type of situation where it isn't just about, okay, well, we're stopping you because someone's going to jump onto you or whatever. We're stopping you to get the. It was purely just, all right, we know we're going to have the numbers here for us if he is stopped, if he is held up in any type of way. And again, we have seen that play. It's one of these ones where you'd love it to be that instant. You'd love to expect every single time that professionals are going to make this play. We all see it in our games. You know that people miss the timing on teleports, miss the timing on Zonias to layer in a CC ability, layer in some type of, uh, you know, factor to stop that person light nails it this time around and i think even in this series earlier we saw a couple of missed ones i think the scout on the ari missing a couple of these type of moments these type of plays so for light to nail it in such a crucial moment to give Weibo the advantage you like to see that as a player and finally we got to see some momentum carry into the next game because right from the get-go this was Weibo all day taking control and in a game where you're seeing oh my god we've got the Yone and the Aurora matchup I'm starting to think that Jax might actually the biggest problem at this tournament so far because it's yet another game where breathes terrifying I'm talking to all the Renekton, all the Jin players out there I don't care if you're a main you love this champion or if you played him once let me ask you, would you like to be drafted right into a red side pick one Jax on the other side? Especially seeing what Jax has been able to do at this, this series. 
no way would you be wanting to play into that one. So absolutely questionable choices straight out of draft. Pretty much a full AD composition. And you're rolling specifically the Renekton and the Jin into that Jackson. What they're going to have to fight through. Almost impossible. And it certainly looked that way out there on the Rift early, given the way that Weibo was pushing their composition. Yeah, and this was the only game in the series that wasn't close. LNG looked discombobulated. This was, there was no back and forth. The only back was, okay, Scout gets a pretty sick triple kill on the Yone, tries to save the game, but Jahu's Aurora got pretty damn fed in this one. Ezreal for light, he's able to clean things up and it's the fastest, most clean game of the series for Weibo to complete what absolutely is the upset. And how about your boy Jahu? going 14, 0, and 22 across games three and four. Well, this is this is a big one because especially when you look through the history, there have been quite a lot of matches between Scout and Jiaohu. And I think the way that it splits out is it's almost, you know, it's something close to 55, 45, 60, 40 type of split in the way that it went in favor of Scout, I believe. So to get this one into to his category, especially I think when ourselves and a lot of other analysts heading you know into this one fans were saying they favored scout and his performance the way that lng has resurged all the way through the lpl since that cold start people believed in him more than they believed in shahu and i think shahu was getting a little bit disrespected because he has been relatively solid to pretty good for weibo at this event even with the ups and downs of weibo have gone through but in this series, he really rose up to the challenge and really stood head and shoulders above his counterpart and scout on the other side. And, you know, I don't want to take full credit for this, but I did say this was going to be the biggest stomp of the quarterfinals, the way of LNG. So the absolute uh, jinx <laughs> I gave them and buff to Weibo, you're welcome. Uh, it's a classic. <laughs> and now this is the second year in a row. Tarzan stands at the end of the finish line, waving goodbye to the folks at LNG saying, again, yeah, we're still rolling on as Weibo Gaming. Weibo still alive, still a potential that we can get a rematch of last year's World's Finals, Weibo and T1. And listen, even, is even deeper, if BLG beats Hanwa, you can get Weibo taking out BLG again in semifinals for the full repeat. This team, oh. how did they do it, man? B BLG are not ready for that one. They are still too fragile, too hurt from how things went all the way through the Swiss stage, having to take down G2 to get into this position, and then having to run through Hanwha life and waiting for you is your old nemesis in Weibo Gaming. God, the storylines for this world can't get any better. Now, uh, now, of course, you got Team Liquid and Fnatic sitting there going, see, Weibo's a top four team. No wonder we lost to them. I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it the exact same type of way. And I think, again, in this one, you saw a lot of the positives uh, of Weibo come through, the right, the things that you want to argue for them in any of these uh, series. I, I still think there was more than enough weaknesses, more than enough gaps left open where you're talking about a team like a Gen G, like a, a T1 operating at their full extent, even a Hanwha Life and BLG still on that same side of the bracket. And I'm not fully convinced that Weibo is going to make this run. Yeah, I, we weren't last year either. And somehow they made it to finals before getting pumped. But uh, yeah, it's, it's Hanwha BLG next on the docket. So we'll see who that opponent is for the yet again miracle running cinderella run weibo gaming in that next round but that is it today for league unlock york and mark here with you gorgeous people thanks for hanging out we'll catch you on that flippity flip